Hello there. This video is going to show you how to reverse code in SPSS, compute Cronbach's alpha to make sure that you did your reverse coding correctly and you have internal reliability and internal consistency, and then create a mean scale score for a measure of perceived supervisory support. So if you take a look at this survey scale, this multi-item survey scale, you'll see there's a seven point Likert scale here. And you'll notice that some of the questions indicate more support from supervisors, but the red questions actually indicate less supportive supervisors. So you want to code your variables so that higher numbers always equal more of or a higher level of whatever the construct is. So if your construct is called perceived supervisory support, it makes the most sense when you interpret your findings if higher numbers indicate more support. So to do that, you need to make sure that the coding for these red, these red opposite worded items is reversed so that higher scores still mean more support. So you take the sevens and turn them into ones and the six turns into twos, five turns into three and four just kind of stays the same. Now you can do this in Excel, but it is pretty painful. So I am going to show you how to do this in SPSS. So you will pull up SPSS and get your data. Got to find it. Boom, there it is. And you'll see here is, I got a lot of data here, but here is the supervisor support. I tend to measure my variables in Qualtrics is what I use in numeric order based on the order in the scale and then kind of having like an abbreviated version of the construct. So you can see all the items here and you'll see just like we saw in the survey, six and seven match up to what we had in the survey. So six and seven, those are the problematic items that need to be reverse coded. So to do that, I'm going to go to transform, recode into different variables. Now you can recode into same variables and it's actually quicker, but I like to maintain all my data. I don't like to just reverse code and write over something in case something goes wrong. I like to have the original stuff. Now you can see, I kind of already did this before, but I'm going to go ahead and reset to show you the whole process. So we need to do six and seven supervisor support. So we'll go down to those items. There we go, six, I'm gonna hold down control, highlight seven as well, and pop them over here. The way that I usually name these is I keep the original name, sup sup here, six, and then stick an R at the end to let me know it's a reverse coded item. And that way, when you go to create your mean scale scores, as you'll see in a little bit, I can sort alphabetically and they'll all be snuggled up together. All right, our next one, sup sup seven R, hit change. Now this is the important part, go into old and new values. And remember it's a seven point scale that I need to flip. So one becomes a seven, two becomes a six, three becomes a five, four, still a four, five becomes a three, six becomes a two and seven becomes a one. Now check it out to check your work on the old side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the new side it's flipped seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Continue hit. Okay. The output's telling me things are happening, giving us some code. Now go down here and you'll see in your variable view, those two new variables just magically appeared. Now, before you do your mean scale score, you need to make sure that you did this correctly and that all of the items that are supposed to measure supervisor support are tapping into the same thing. So I'm going to go here and I'll just show you how to sort alphabetically and we're going to look for sub sub. There we go. And I'm going to hold control. Now do not highlight the original six and seven, just highlight the reverse coded. And then so you can keep your outputs organized, I usually stick the scale label there and hit OK. Huzzah! We've got 0.92. You need to make sure your Combax Alpha is at least 0.70 or above. If it is, you're golden. If it's not, you can do the analysis again. And here, click Scale if item deleted. And it'll give you an output that will tell you if you have any problematic items. So if you had a really crappy Cronbach's alpha of like 0.5 or something, and you looked over here and you saw this, right? 0.918. Well, then that would tell you to get rid of item five, and then you would have a 0.918 Cronbach's alpha. So just a handy tip there. 
All right, we're ready to make our mean scale score. So we go to comp or transform, compute, and I'm going to usually do this in all caps without any number at the end. We're going to sort alphabetically so we can find all of our items together, snuggled up. There we go. So here we're going to do mean parentheses and then double click comma, double click comma for all of those items. And I gotta double check something real quick because I think I may have forgotten eight in our alpha, but that's okay. All right, and I hit okay. Notice I only included the reverse coded if there's reverse coded. All right, oops, look, I made a boo-boo, so hold on. You're gonna get more practice with Cronbach's alpha. Let's go to scale, reliability, and just to make sure that we're cool keeping all those items in that mean scale score, we gotta run this again with our supervisor support. Look, it's like elusive, there we go. Eight, there we are. Let's just make sure. Okay, we're still in the clear, we're still good. That mean scale score is nice, and looky there, it just appeared. And again, that is for all those items only the reverse coded ones go in if it's reverse coded. And now this is what you would include in an analysis. All right, hope this was helpful and you're ready to make some mean scale scores for surveys that have internal reliability.